As politicians increasingly position themselves as anti-woke, is the tide finally turning against wokeness? So my next guest would certainly hope so. It's uh, Peter Bogosian, everyone. <laughs> How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Peter. Great to be here. Thanks for coming. You're a philosopher, you're an author, you were formerly a professor at Portland State. Correct. Why did you resign from that post? I resigned because they, they were interested in... It became an ideology mill, so they, they wanted people to believe certain things, and, and, and they, they, wanted, they, they brokered no dissent whatsoever. So the university was actually effectively trying to produce indoctrinated drones rather than teaching Correct. them how to think. And, and the unfortunate thing really is that the students ultimately suffer for that, yeah. right? And so they really weren't having anybody advocate for the, their intellectual lives. When we talk about wokeness, and people often get confused about what we mean by that, yeah. do you want to give us like a 30-second definition? Sure. Actually, your book had the, the, the best de uh, definition oh, of all Peter. the new Puritans. <laughs> no, uh, so it's basically the idea that the and again there's a kernel of truth in all of this yes it's basically the idea that there have been individuals who are systemically discriminated against and um, that discrimination is carried on to the present day and the way to look at that discrimination is that it comes from systems yes. so any disparity of outcome so any differences racially for example Ha couldn't be due to culture, couldn't be due to genetics, has to be due to the fact that the system is intentionally discriminating against so you have a, people. So you have a system, uh, maybe there are fewer gay people as CEOs in a business than straight people. The only explanation for that is there's a systemic homophobia at the heart of these Yeah, and, things. and you can also, as Helen Pluckrose says, you can also have a conspiracy without any conspirators. Right. So even if literally nobody in the entire system wants that to be the case, the system itself replicates the, the values in, in outcomes. But the other thing about this is uh, the people who we often describe as the woke yeah. seem very intolerant to having a conversation. It, they don't correct. want to have the discussion. Correct. Why is that? Because they believe that, the, the, to, to paraphrase Audre Lorde, the master's tools cannot disassemble or disable the master's house. The master's house is, the master's tools are reason, science, uh, which is called epistemic adequacy, which is basically having a good reason for believing what you believe. So enlightenment values, really. The, yeah, enlightenment values. And so they, they believe that the master's house is racism, misogyny, homophobia, sexism. And the way that you construct that house is through the tools of science, is through the, the method that we've used to solve problems for literally a thousand years. Which is why so many of these activists seem so unreasonable, because they don't believe in reason. Well, correct. And they also don't want to have a conversation because they believe that that's platforming. So right. they believe that the speech itself, there's something intrinsic in the speech itself that causes the problem and elevates the problem. And yet you put yourself on the, in the firing line. You go out there correct. trying to talk to the woke. You've set up this thing called street epistemology. Correct. Uh, where you set up these uh, sort of exercises and ask passers-by to volunteer. But you often go to university campuses, the kind of places that aren't going to right. welcome discussion. Right, and the, the results have been rather remarkable how people... Uh, so, so, okay, so you, you need to understand why you go to the university. You go, we go to the university because people pick up these values from the university. This is a very intentional thing. It's a, it is, this actually is a system. It's a system that's designed to spread an ideology through the wider culture, the woke ideology. Right, but that's not what universities are meant to be for. They're meant to be about the pursuit of truth. Truth-seeking, yeah, they should be truth-seeking. And that's the other reason why you have a choice. You can either have free speech or you can have offices of diversity, equity, inclusion. You cannot have both. They're right. fundamentally incompatible. Well, let's have a quick look at something that you've done here. So this is your street epistemology. I think we've got a short clip of what you're... Anyone who does not have the same opinion as you is a bigoted... A trans woman should not be able to compete in women's sports has transphobic beliefs. Point blank period. Trans women are women. Therefore, they compete in women's sports. Like, that's really just, like, the end of conversation. Like, there's really no, like, oh, but, like, you know, like, the, the boys and then the girls and the testosterone. No. Like, it's all based in transphobia. So I would, it's not about, like, me believing in facts. It's not about me listening to the research. It's literally just called, like, I'm saying this line because I refuse to be transphobic. So, Peter, if you just explain that, you've got these lines on the floor and you're asking people to stand in a certain point. Right. In that case, it was about whether women should, whether trans women should compete in women's sports. C correct. So I go all around the world. I just came back from Australia. I'm in, everywhere in the world. Hungary, Romania. And in the middle, there's a neutral line. Yeah. And to the left, there's strongly disagree, disagree, slightly disagree. 
and then to the right to slightly agree, et cetera. Yes. And then either I'll ask them a question or they'll ask a, a, a question, but usually some hot button issue, gender, sexuality, trans status, and they'll move to a line. Yes. And then I'll try to facilitate a conversation between people on different lines or among people. And then I'll ask targeted Socratic questions yes. to see if, they're, if the evidence and the reason they have for standing on the line is justified. Yeah, I mean, there's a really, I mean, I've watched a number of these videos on your YouTube channel. There's a really fascinating thing you do where you say, what would it take for you to move to a different line? Correct. What would you have to hear? Now, that woman we just heard, they're saying trans women are women, that's the end of the debate. Right. She said she could hear nothing that would make, make right. her move. So in other words, she's admitting, even if the evidence came out that uh, men are better at sports, she would ignore that. Right, so this is really, really important. If you're not willing to change your mind about something, then the belief isn't held on the basis of evidence. Right. Because by definition, what it means to hold a belief on the basis of evidence is there could be some other piece of evidence that comes in that causes you to change your mind. Yes. So then I'll say, okay, so you don't hold, the belief isn't held on the basis of evidence. What is, on what basis do you hold belief? How do you justify that confidence? And invariably you'll see, particularly with regard to trans, people will believe trans issues not because they have evidence for it, but because it's a moral belief. Yes, and, and in that clip as well, there was the accusation of transphobia or right. hatred. That seems to be... But, you know, you're very... Um, you, you remain very calm when there's every, people... Every, that... Literally everybody says that to me, yeah. But, because it's incredible, because they're shouting at you. Yeah. yeah. And, and, but you, you, you... I mean, you wrote a book with James Lindsay called How to Have Impossible right. Conversations, right. which is a fantastic book. Right. I would recommend it right. to everyone watching, because your view is that we should allow them to, to sort of have their tantrums. Oh, 100%, yeah. So... Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I sincerely am curious. I never ask a question. My golden rule of this is I do not ask people questions, no matter if it's I get in an Uber on the street, if I genuinely don't want to know the answer. Right. So I will only ask a question if I genuinely want to know the answer. The other thing is, I think, it, so when, when somebody is, is, is shouting at you, it, it, the, the, if you want someone to be civil... The response, I know I can't swear on your show, but it's not to give them the middle finger, right? Yes, of course. You, you, you need to be civil to them. So you need to model the behavior that you want to see in them. But this big question, I've, I've wrestled with it myself, yeah. is that when you get into a conflict with the woke, yeah. they, they generally throw insults, they lie about you, they, they, right. they, they scream, they bully people. Right. And my instinct is, OK, let's just work around them because I can't be dealing with that. But you, you take a different approach. Am I wrong to, to do that? No, no, I, I would never say that when it, the way that somebody else wants to deal with it is, oh, I shouldn't say never. They're, so they're, you know, like pulling on a chainsaw or violence or something is always a bad yeah, idea. I would say but, so. Okay, so, so, but, but barring that, it, it, there is something fundamental about being treated humanely. Yes. And, and we know, for example, that people change their mind from a view of psychological safety. There's a really interesting study, very quickly, there's a really interesting study about um, American soldiers who defected to uh, 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 North Korea. And they, they found out uh, universally that the soldiers who defected came from a single barracks. And the barracks, they were taught that the enemy was savages, monkeys, primitives. But when they got to, to, to there, they were treated with kindness and decency. There's something fundamental about treating people with kindness and dignity that causes them at some point to see you as a human. Well, I hope you're right, and I hope by treating those who identify as woke yeah. with that kind of civility, we can win them, win them back to reason, possibly? Do you think it can happen? I, I've never lost hope on anybody. No. Yeah. Fantastic. Where can people find these videos? Because they really are worth seeing. Uh, thank you. Uh, Peter Bogosian on YouTube, B-O-G-H-O-S-S-I-N, and we post clips on Twitter that people can can watch and we're going to do some in London here so we're going to go in the streets and ask people about a wide range of questions. Please do check that out because it does give me hope that we might sort of come out of this madness, the madness of this culture war uh, and bring civility back. Peter Bogosian, thanks so much.